Hello, today we're looking at an exciting little pouch from Eashin, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon, click on it and it'll tell you when I'm uploading videos. What we have today is the Eashin UZ65. If you're in the US, that's the same as a UZ65. Uh, it is a tiny little whoop, uh, 65 mil, uh, motor the motor, 1S, but um, like most of the modern whoops, uh, higher KV motors, this is using 19,000 KV, which is good for general inside flying, though pretty powerful, you can do flips and stuff, not as crazy as like, you know, the 25,000 KV motors. Opening up and you get this in a little pouch, here's what you get. Here's the little quad itself, it's quite well, um, Ugh, it's quite tight this packaging, which looks like that. We'll get to that just in a sec because also in the box you have four of these little 300 milliamp hour high voltage 1S batteries which are 40 slash 80C. Then in the little sort of accessories thing you have some spare props, little screwdriver, prop removal tool and some brief instructions about how to set things up. I'll just open this up, see how big they are. Normal sort of thing. It's got a board schematic on there which is quite nice. It's got the settings which it comes with in Betaflight. I have got the FreeSky uh, SPI version which uh, is going to be, well, I think it comes with D8. It, it suggests you run D8 with it. One word of morning though, I found that my little UFL antenna had come away from the connection in the box. Just make sure you've got an antenna sticking out of it because it's very small and if it drops out it can be in the bottom of the box and you don't want to power up without that antenna on because it will basically melt your VTX. So the specs on this, we've got the little 0802 19,000 kV motors. As ever, this is a little crazy beat all in one board. So it does the uh, flight, F4 flight controller, it does the SPI receiver, and it does the ESCs all in one. We do have a little VTX, which will do 25 to 100 milliwatts, which is uh, quite high for something this small. And uh, you can use smart audio to change all that. And this tiny little camera is the Runcam Nano 3. It's coming out of the box about 45 degree angle, which I think is a little bit aggressive for flying indoors. Uh, looks like you can change the angle of that one, so I'm going to sort that out. We should talk about the weight as well. 21 grams as is. Put a battery in it, it goes all the way up to 29 grams. Not exactly a heavy weight. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get this set up, uh, get it sorted on beta flight, maybe reduce that camera angle, see what's going on, and uh, then we'll take it for a fly. Hooray! Lockdown flying. We can fly in the house, we can fly out into the garden with it, not a problem. About perfect for a little quad like this. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's hook this up to Betaflight and see what's going on. First off, the uh, USB adapter is underneath, so it's quite hard to calibrate the accelerometer when it's sort of like that because you can't put it down flat, but it seems, just holding it, that it's fairly flat anyway, so all good there. Ports wise, we've got a TBS Smart Audio set up on UART 2. UART 1 uh, is not doing anything, so this is a crazy board so generally if you want to add an external receiver because this is an SPI there is a space for it configuration wise we have reversed props uh, D shot 600 but we've got and this is uh, bead flight 411 bi-directional D shot support in other words we should have RPM filters and We've got a slightly lower gyro and PID frequency of 4 kHz. And when you look at RPM filters, it does talk about using 4K, 4K as a sort of default starting point where, you know, things should work. Obviously, we're going to change the personalization. Arming's correct. Uh, we've got FreeSky D. I've just gone ahead and bound this in the CLI. And air mode is set on, which I'll be turning off. Uh, the rest looks pretty good. I'll have a, an RX set there for the D-Shot beacon tone. Uh, the rest looks good. The battery minimum cell is very low. Max cell is higher than it should be, so that's pretty good. The PID tune is... Well, it, I think it looks different. Have they done something? Hard to tell. What have we got? This is very standard in terms of the rates. So I'll be doing something there. This is going around like a mental thing. Um, I have bound it, but I haven't changed anything else. One thing I can tell you from the receiver tab is that the channel mapping order is different. I am AETR, this is TAER, so I need to change that over. Modes, they've got arm angle and tail mode, so I'll be changing that. Motors, I'll do a quick test of this because you can see it's got the telemetry info for the motors. I'll just check that works. And the current 
OSD. It's not too bad actually. That is not um, too offensive for the sort of stuff I use. I just have things in a different order. I don't pay any attention to the milliamp hour used or the amount of amps that is getting used because this is all estimated stuff. I just prefer to know my battery. Uh, but the rest it just needs a little bit of a move around and then we're good. And let's have a look. Yep, the VTX table is set up, so that's good stuff. Okay, I'll sort that out. I'll check the RPM filter stuff is correctly reading the telemetry. And then we'll charge up some batteries and fly it. Okay, down here in close up for two reasons. One of which is I forgot to mention the charger that's actually in the box itself. And I tested that with a battery and it seems to work fine. You just don't know what the charges is going so I, I used my regular four port charger. The other thing I wanted to mention was about the camera tilt. That is about the minimum amount of tilt you can get and the reason is because if you look in here there is a little sort of rubber bit just underneath that board which is already tilted upwards and this camera has some wires underneath it and they hit that board so that is about the absolute minimum you can get in terms of uh, the angle that is not as quite as bad as it seems it's pretty wide angle the the only time this becomes difficult indoors is going downstairs because you kind of need to look downwards without pointing downwards because you'll go too fast so uh, for normal flying around that's fine um, it's just for stuff where if you need to go really slowly so you don't want to be leaning forward that's where you might face uh, problems a little bit of a shame it just needed to come down about another sort of 10 degrees to have been perfect there so off we go on the maiden flight and I thought I'd just show you the first minute of what I was doing because in the first minute it um, it lets me decide how easy it is to get the grips with it and that's the going down the stairs bit which is a little bit tricky from the angle and one thing I do notice is that the battery was showing a little bit low and there's my bemused family wondering why there's a little quadcopter going through the house. Um, we're getting some interference lines on this and it's something I've noticed over the last couple of weeks whilst everyone's been in the house. We've had a lot more devices um, indoors on 5.8 gig Wi-Fi and these look like interference lines from that. Uh, there's a couple of channels that are completely unflyable. This, this is why I'm on A um, to get a bit better but I'm still getting interference. I don't think it's down to the VTX. I think it's down to this wi-fi router but um that's the first sort of one minute of me going around i'll show you a bit more from some of the other flights i did so the reason i wanted to show that first minute is because it was really easy out of the box there wasn't any sort of getting used to how the quad was going and working it out there was a little bit about how how different the throttle was than normal but generally speaking out of the box um it flew really well and it was really sort of predictable about how it was going to fly so that was um, a really sort of happy situation and this is battery number three at this point and I'm just having a good time sort of just hurtling it round between the house and the garden I just wanted to show you, you can go slowly here um, not that Sophie was totally impressed by it but so uh, yeah you do get that that up tilt which to do super slow to explore things in great detail is going to be a little bit harder because of that. So by battery number four I decided to try Horizon. It felt like it was going to be very stable to be able to do uh, any sort of acrobatics and even in Horizon it, it's pretty easy to go nice and slow. I, I draw the line at flying acro in the house in a, a little quad like this because it's just overcorrection drives me into the walls basically and you can see when we do a little flip we hardly get any sort of loss of height that said, I don't think this is my sort of flying I, I, I do all the time on this little sort of quad. I prefer just to sort of hurtle in and out of the house. I'm not too worried about, you know, doing rolls or flips and stuff. It's just good fun to um, fly around anyway. I think I prefer going for sort of gaps rather than any sort of flippy stuff. But um, yeah, it will certainly do it. And, and I dare say in acro in a slightly larger space, you'll have a, a great deal of fun there as well. So whilst I was flying those first four batteries, I didn't want to go back and look at anything. But after I finished them, I put the batteries on to charge again and had a look at the problem I was getting with the voltage reading a bit low. So I had a look and the battery scale was set to 110. 
So what I did is I plugged in a fully charged battery, looked at how Betaflight read that, compared it to the multimeter, and then I changed the scale until it read correctly. And that scale eventually got set from 110 to 112, and this made the battery read at 4.3. Um, of course, it should read at 4.35, but it doesn't seem to do any places beyond one decimal spot. But that was at least reading more accurately for me. The other thing I noted I was doing from the get-go is I was flying at 100 milliwatts and that's because it was set at 100 milliwatts straight from the get-go. So I set that down to 25 and I thought I'd do a comparison, see if I could uh, introduce some static. So I'm in uh, the sort of living room and I thought I'd go down the alleyway because that's going through the maximum number of brick walls uh, and see what sort of static I can get. Uh, and you can see here we're getting some good breakup on uh, 25 quite different from this sort of interference lines to break up um, as you can see there it's like it's not terrible you can certainly fly through it but um, it's certainly some break up there and we're just going to give it another go just to make sure it's consistent and yep it's definitely there we've definitely got some uh, good break up happening on 25 milliwatts so I've set it back to 100 milliwatts and we're going to do that same flight from the same position just going down the alley to see what we get this time. Still getting those interference lines, of course, from all the uh, the Wi-Fi stuff. And what are we getting here? We're getting some static, but not as much. Definitely an improvement on 100 milliwatts. And just like the previous one, we're going to repeat that just to make sure we're consistent. A little bit more this time, but definitely better than it was on 25. I, I'd hazard a guess, though, that that 25 milliwatts isn't 25 milliwatts. I've run a lot of quads down there at 25 milliwatts and many of them are better. If I had the ability to test out the milliwatts there, I, I think 25 wouldn't be reaching 25, but uh, the 100 at least seems decent. But of course, check your part of the world to decide if you're actually allowed to run it at 100 milliwatts. But again, it would be really interesting to get a power meter on these and see what actual milliwatts they're putting out. By battery number seven, I'd recruit the help of my daughter to get some external shots. And you can see just how tiddly this is, and it doesn't make much noise. Nice. Gotta say, I really did enjoy flying this a lot more than I thought, and perhaps that's because I'm really missing my normal flying. But um, it was just really easy to get to grips with very quickly. I, I really like a quad that you don't have to spend time getting used to. It just sort of it, it fits you, and that doesn't mean it's going to fit everybody. I guess it it certainly fitted the way I flew things, um, and I really did appreciate being able to sort of just take it in and out of the house like this and and just mess around. And, and blast about the garden and through the house and, and have a lot of fun with it. In this last battery, I actually just flew around and quite gently just to see what sort of time I could get out of the battery because generally I was getting about three minutes um, of sort of larking about flying reasonably fast and I could eke that out to about three minutes 30 that I was tending to land at 3.3 uh, volts and not going any lower. This one I let go a little bit lower and I decided to come in when we started sort of flicking around between 3.2 uh, and 3.3. And at that point, I, I felt it was going to start dropping a bit quicker because you just see it starting to hit 3.10. So that's probably not a good place to go further. And uh, brilliant landing, as you can see. And it, it starts to recover straight away. So I'm pretty happy with the battery there. But it seems like you could get about four minutes out of it reasonably. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is now my new favourite whoop. And I'll explain why. Because the favourite things are always a moving goalpost. As things come out, other favourites get replaced. Generally speaking, I think it was accepted that the Modular 6 was the best whoop on the market. However, I couldn't in good conscience say to people, this is your first quad, because it was quite a handful. I would always say things like the Emacs Tiny Hawk S was your first quad, because it was very easy to fly, although it's size difference. This seems to get the balance right between easy to fly and good performance. No doubt the Mobula 6, um, you can eke a bit more out of it, especially if you go with the 25,000 kV motors, very powerful, you can do a lot with it. 
But I, I found this a handful. This is the 19,000 kV motors. I always found the throttle a bit difficult to, to get right. Um, even putting some throttle expo on it, um, it, it was always a little bit bobbly. This thing, I just took straight out and I could just go from there. And they are practically the sort of the same quad. You will notice that the UZ65 has slightly larger props um, and thus it's a little bit quieter and we're not having to give it quite so much throttle. But aside from that, they've got the same camera, the Runcan Nano 3, they've got the same motors, they've got the same board. Um, there's not that much difference about them. This was shipped with quite old uh, Betaflight firmware. This has got um, RPM filters set up. So it's a little bit more ahead of the curve. But on, on the bad side, there's always nitpicks. I couldn't get the camera angle any more down than that. Whereas the Mobula 6, I could bring it further down so I could just get these in view and that made it a little easier to go slowly, but that was balanced out by the fact it was slightly more difficult to handle on the throttle. So overall, I'm going with this one. This is my new favourite uh, Whoop. This is the uh, Ishin UZ or UZ65 um, and I'm really enjoying flying it because it's just so instant. Of course, you may disagree, many others might, it's a very personal opinion, but uh, for my flying style, for what I like to do, my favourite. Um, for me, it's beating the Mobula 6. Anyway, this has been my review of the Ishin UZ65 and was kindly supplied by Banggood, so thanks very much to Banggood. And of course, you can find links to where you can find more details about this down in the description below. I hope that's been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.